Welcome, brave souls, to a realm where darkness and mystery intertwine. You've chanced upon the Hourglass Enigma, a passage to the most bone-chilling and mysterious narratives ever woven. The merciless Montana sun baked the endless flatlands, shimmering waves of heat from the road's cracked blacktop. Alex's rust-eaten pickup truck rattled and wheezed as it labored over each rise, the unchecked spread of prairie grass lapping at the side of the highway. In the rearview mirror, Alex caught only fleeting glimpses of his haggard reflection, sunken eyes rimmed by dark circles, hollow cheeks cast in stark relief by the shadows. The weathered lines etched into his once youthful face were the legacy of too many regrets, too many wrong turns that led him stranded in this desolate nowhere. As the solitary truck descended into the valley cradling Winnet, the surrounding landscape seemed to swallow the tiny cluster of buildings whole. This rugged frontier town would be his new haven, Alex hoped, a place to retreat from his past and immerse himself in music once more, to lose himself in solitude and rediscover the inspiration that had long eluded him. Well, I'm a dead man walking. Maybe coming here will finally lay the ghost to rest. If I can't find the muse in this lonesome place, I'm well and truly lost. A faded green windmill stood immobile vigil over Winnet, its creaking veins stilled by the dead air. The lone paved road underfoot bore cracks like calloused scars, while the few ramshackle buildings lining the street wore the desiccated wooden shingles and peeling clapboard siding of another era. It was as if the outside world and its passage of time had simply forgotten this forsaken speck of a town. The sense of being frozen, preserved like an insect trapped in amber, pressed in from all sides. Alex's pickup idled to a stop in a semi-vacant lot, the engine bark echoing lonely down the abandoned main drag. A ragtag cluster of rusted truck husks and listing RVs suggested this was the town's tenuous link to the 21st century. His boots crunched on the parched, dusty earth as he climbed the weather-stained steps to the slatted wood porch of the Winnet boarding house. A buzzing neon cactus flickered fitfully above the doorway, appearing more like a mirage than an invitation. Ma'am, I just need a room. Alex said gruffly, wrapping callous knuckles on the pocked glass of the front window. A faded floral print curtain twitched and the unmistakable rattle of deadbolts broke the stillness. Alex wrestled his duffel bag through the cramped doorway, stooping to avoid a low-slung ceiling that leaked plumes of yellowed fiberglass insulation. Mottled wallpaper curled away from the walls in wide ribbons, flaking like old scabs from decades of neglect and sealing in the musty, stale reek of disuse. A naked 40-watt bulb dangled from fraying wires in the center of the room, casting harsh white light across the pitted wood floorboards and the sagging pockmarked mattress. In one corner, a spider had spun an intricate web between the exposed springs of a scarred recliner, the delicate strands vibrating slightly with each whisper of the ancient radiator's breath. The washroom's only amenities were a stained porcelain basin and a cheaply retiled shower stall. Beyond the cramped toilet, the overhead shower caddy was clogged with cobwebs and accumulated dust. But it didn't matter, none of it did. This cell-like space was his penance his refuge from the ghosts that had trailed him across half the country. I've stayed in worse shitholes than this, that's for damn sure. I can find purchase here, as long as there's an electric socket and four walls. The first pale rays of dawn filtered through the smudged, salt-caked windowpane, casting the room's stark features into harsher relief. Alex blinked away the brine sting, peeled himself from the sweat-dampened sheets, and padded across the worn floorboards to retrieve his guitar case. As his calloused fingers traced the familiar contours of the battered acoustic, the morning's fresh light seemed to breathe new life into the well-seasoned wood grain. This was his sole lifeline, his connection to the passion for music that had once burned so fiercely, before everything went off the rails. A discordant chord rang out, jarring Alex from his reverie. He'd need to head into town and find a cafe or diner for a proper cup of coffee, and a hot meal that didn't involve anything from a rusty tin can. First, he'd freshen up and make himself look, well, at least slightly more presentable than the vagabond recluse his reflection suggested. Well, no use putting it off any longer. Time to go meet my new neighbors, assuming there are any living souls left in this dried up town. When its slumbering main street shuddered awake with a reluctant groan as the first shops began kindling their neon signs to flickering life, a warped set of crimson plastic letters buzzed to attention above a ceramic tiled facade, spelling out Maggie's in an urgent, desperate tone. 
The smell of grease-scorched griddles and fresh-brewed truck-stop coffee wafted through the cracked front windows, mingling with the scents of old cigarette smoke, stale beer, and well-buffed vinyl that still clung to the diner's interior. Pale morning light sliced through the dusty inset windows in thick shafts, cutting slanted pathways through the airborne haze. The cracked linoleum counters had been scrubbed to a dull sheen while a nickel-plated steel napkin dispenser winked from each tarnished tabletop like a miniature ship's beacon. Mopping her brow with a grease-stained dish towel, Maggie looked every bit the resolutely grounded matron as she cradled a rotary dial landline to her shoulder and rattled off the day's specials in a weary drawl. Low there, hon. Take a seat anywhere you like. I'll be with you shortly. She flashed a tight, impatient smile at Alex as he eased himself onto a cracked vinyl stool. Go ahead and start yourself a hot cup while you're waiting. Coffee's hot and fresh, just the way the good Lord intended. The groan of weathered wood and squeal of sun-baked cushion springs heralded Alex's arrival at the dimly lit town bar. A hazy constellation of neon Budweiser logos and faded metal signs advertised a kaleidoscope of forgotten loggers, creating an improvised skylight above the room's perpetual gloom. Battered pine planks comprised the floor, grooved and distended into waves by decades of scuffed boots and spilled liquor. The tang of stale cigarette smoke and spilled beer permeated every nook, and the sickly sweet bouquet of rot and mildew wafted from the swinging bat-wing doors that led to the restrooms. Alex's eyes slowly adjusted as he approached the pitted concrete bar adorned with scores of overlapping rings from the mugs of thousand afternoons and evenings spent pondering life's annals over cut-rate whiskey. A lone figure hunched at the counter's far end, a smoky tendril of vapor escaping his upturned collar. This had to be the sheriff the old woman at the boarding house had warned him about. Evening, Sheriff. Alex offered with a cautious nod, easing himself onto a stool two slots down. I don't mean to pry, but on my first night here, I couldn't help but wonder. That strange humming sound out there at night. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? The sheriff turned his head slowly, one eye barely visible beneath the broad brim of his Stetson. He took a deliberate sip of his whiskey before responding in a low, measured tone. Can't rightly say I know much about any humming noises. He paused, holding Alex's gaze. But I'd advise keeping an open mind. There are lots of strange sounds in the wilderness, if you'll pardon me saying so. Sometimes it's best to just appreciate the natural music around us rather than dwell on it too much. His voice remained even, devoid of overt threat, but the hint of a warning lingered in his carefully chosen words. This was a man long accustomed to the unspoken codes of the frontier, a subtle suggestion that some phenomena were better left unexplored and unquestioned, at least by outsiders unused to the town's peculiar rhythms. In the nights that followed, the incessant hum saturated Alex's waking thoughts until it felt like a presence itself, cloying and inescapable. He'd lie awake in the murky darkness, hands clamped over his ears in a futile attempt to block out the resonance pulsing through the walls into his bones. When fitful bouts of sleep did find him, his slumbers were plagued by feverish dreams, twisted abstract nightmares in which disembodied voices and droning industrial clangs echoed across vast empty plains. He would jolt awake in a cold sweat, listening to the sound undulating all around him in waves, taunting him. During daylight hours, Alex tried to lose himself in his music. He'd spend long stretches picking mournful blues refrains, hoping they might inspire new material, new melodies to override the maddening hum, but the all-consuming drone always wormed its way back in, insinuating itself into every note, every riff, until his playing descended into discordant fugues. Like the damn sound is hardwired straight into my brain refusing to be tuned out, following me from my waking hours in the dreams and back again. A constant nagging I can't escape. What the hell is happening to me? After another restless night, Alex found himself at Maggie's diner again, nursing a triple shot black coffee in hopes its bitterness might jolt him alert. A cold sweat prickled at his hairline. When was the last time he'd eaten a proper meal? He studied the stout, graying waitress, her star-spangled attire and sunny disposition completely at odds with the decaying husk of a town around them. How oblivious could she be to the unrelenting droning that made every night feel like having ice picks jammed into his skull? Morning, sunshine. She flashed him a toothy grin as she whisked past to flip a sizzling batch of pancakes. You look like you could use a little more rest. Those bed springs at the Borden house ain't much for a good night's sleep, I reckon. Alex debated bringing up the noise again, that damnable whine that seemed to be devolving him, but her perpetual cheer caused the words to die on his tongue. 
better to stay silent than risk exposure as the rambling madman. Yeah, just a restless spell is all. I'll be right as rain once you get me a hot cup of coffee and a warm plate of whatever's good today. Later that afternoon, Alex wandered the deserted side streets, searching for any slice of ordinary peace and quiet to counteract the droning cacophony. But the hum's vibrations seemed to pursue him relentlessly, a physical presence nipping at his heels. He found himself drifting towards a small, run-down music shop, its faded awnings and dusty upright pianos crowding the cramped display window. Maybe immersing himself in the old passions could rekindle his creative spark, drown out the maddening background thrumming, at least for a little while. The tinkle of a handbell ushered Alex inside, where the musty odors of aged woodwinds, brass, and valve oil intermingled. Bowed strings and polished brass winked from the dimness as his eyes adjusted. The elderly clerk peered up from restringing a weathered acoustic, giving Alex a curt nod before returning to his meticulous work. For a few fleeting moments, trailing his fingers across the cool aluminum of a saxophone's body, or plucking the thick steel strings of a hanging electric guitar, Alex felt the hum's resonance diminish to a distant murmur. The quiet was shattered by a thunderous crash of brass and from the street outside. What in the hell? That damn noise has followed me here too? No, no. It it has to be my mind playing tricks now is all. I'm losing my grip. That night, unable to stem the hum's frantic pulsing, Alex sought refuge at the bottom of a whiskey bottle. He staggered down Winnett's main avenue, the wind moaning through the vacant lots and side alleys in eerie sympathy with the droning resonance. Ragged trees cast spindly shadows that seemed to slither across the cracked asphalt in time with the sound's undulating rhythm. Alex's vision blurred, his surroundings taking on a hellish funhouse quality as if the entire world were vibrating at the frequency of the relentless whine. The saloon's weather-beaten sign, its plastic lettering long since faded into obscurity, creaked back and forth like a secret coded message as he pushed through the batwing doors. Inside, the dank, nicotine-tinged air hung low and suffocating, a half-dozen pairs of eyes swiveling to regard the newcomer. Alex lurched to the bar, its glazed jar wood surface rippling under the hum's influence. The taciturn sheriff hunched over his usual vigil at the bottle-lined trough, regarding Alex with thinly veiled disdain. I know you hear it. The words tumbled out, Alex's voice thick and slurred as he glared back at the lawman. You. All of you hear that goddamn infernal drone, howling in the night like the world's slowest descent into madness. And none of you, not one, has a sack to admit it. The next morning, Maggie found Alex nursing the previous night's bender at a sticky booth in the rear of her diner. The place reeked of stale beer, overpowering the usual cherry cafe aromas of griddle smoke and burnt coffee. My lord, did a skunk take up squatting in here? As she approached, she swatted the air in front of her nose, setting down a steaming mug and plate of greasy hash browns with a resonant clatter. That's the most industrial strength antiperspirant I ever smelled. You up and join a distillery workers' union without telling nobody? Alex only groaned in response, mm. clutching his temples against the ambient noises jangling like railroad spikes in his brain. The clanging dishes, the chatter of morning regulars, the sizzle of meat on the griddle, all mocking overtures to the deepening thrum that was rapidly drowning out all else. Honey, you need to get yourself some fresh air. Clear them sinuses out. Maggie leaned in with a conspiratorial whisper. Dr. Harrow swung by while you was still napping one off. Said she'd be back round evening time to patch you up if you was still feeling poorly. A doctor? Yes. Perhaps a logical scientific voice could make sense of the irrational hell that was consuming him. If nothing else, provide a reprieve from the encroaching isolation. Or maybe she'll have me carted off to a loony bin somewhere where I belong. Strapped and sedated until the droning fades to silence. As daylight waned, Alex tried and failed to lose himself in blues riffs, the hum disrupting every attempt to settle into his usual creative flow. Musical notes slurred into ambient discord, just as a brisk rap at the door froze his fingers against the strings. A woman in a crisp whipcord jacket and slacks stood at the entrance, the bemused expression of an academic drifting in from a more civilized realm. Her gaze flicked from Alex to the trash-strewn disarray surrounding him. You must be Alex. She said at length, extending a hand. I'm Dr. Elaine Harrow. I was told my professional counsel might be warranted regarding a certain auditory affliction. Alex quickly gathered himself and rose to meet her handshake, all too aware of the stale stench of yesterday's bender still clinging to his clothing. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, please. 
It's this damn droning hum that I can't seem to, well, get away from. It's like it's coming from the damn walls themselves, and it's getting stronger and stronger. He paused, debating how much to reveal about the disorienting dreams and the paranoia taking root. I'm afraid it's driving me a bit mad, to be honest. Fascinating. Dr. Harrow eased into a straggly armchair, her eyes alight with the zeal of scientific curiosity. I've long studied acoustic phenomena. Infra-sound vibrations caused by everything from atmospheric variations to plate tectonics. Frequencies below the audible range can still impact the human sense of well-being. Tell me more about the particulars of this hum, how it makes you feel. As Alex haltingly recounted his experiences, the doctor's expression remained impassive, almost hungry. It was as if his torment existed purely as fodder for her clinical interests, but she was also the only one acknowledging his plight, even through her detached demeanor that had to count for something, didn't it? In the days following Dr. Harrow's arrival, Alex found himself surrendering more and more to the droning resonance. The hum had evolved, shedding its ambient atmospheric qualities to become a palpable, sentient force. It called to him in fitful dreams, a gnawing, insistent pulse that beckoned him into abysmal depths, vast, lightless caverns where skittering shadows took on vaguely anthropoid forms in the periphery, scattering at the vibrational disturbance of his dream's descent. Upon waking, the effect only intensified. The ever-present reverberation felt as if it were steadily eroding the barriers between his consciousness and an unseen realm that existed just on the other side of audible perception, sanding away his grasp on reality, on what was real versus what existed in the hum's reverberant harmonics. Dr. Harrow remained a fixture through it all, her analytical gaze scrutinizing his feverish creative output with cold detachment. She barely acknowledged the increasingly frenetic, atonal quality of his playing, nor his bouts of startled waking from night terrors. Her sole interest seemed to revolve around documenting the hum's amplifying effects. Have you tried to let the sound guide your musical expression? She asked one afternoon, circling Alex with a clinical rigidity as he strummed a droning, atonal succession of notes. It may be that allowing the vibrations to flow through you could awaken latent potentialities. Latent potentialities? Is she mental, or am I finally careening over the edge of the certifiable lunacy myself? This can't be normal response to some acoustic anomaly. I'm losing it. In the oppressive Montana summer days, the blinding sun seemed to throb in time with the hum. Alex took to drawing all the dingy window shades, enshrouding his rented room in a womb-like gloom as thick and palpable as the subsonic frequencies. Here in the stifling dark, he could immerse himself fully in the omnipresent drone, a wail descending into the aphotic depths. The interior world became his only reality, waking dream states bleeding into the fleeting respites of actual slumber, all while the vibrations grew, strengthening in tandem with the dimming of his connection to the outside world. Reams of sheet music littered the floor in chaotic profusion, feverish clawings toward capturing the hum through transcribed notations. Every conceivable sequence sketched out across the staves, with furious arrows and scribbled marginalia, suggesting recursive pathways into realms of sound never before traversed. Dr. Harrow's visits became increasingly sporadic, like tracking the muted sun's arc across the sealed room's condensing walls. She was always watching, her eyes glittering with scrutiny whenever Alex surfaced from his trance-like reveries. Her merciless gaze pinned and dissected a butterfly. Are you seeing it, Alex? She asked in a near whisper, her breath hot against the back of his clammy neck. The sounds you're manifesting, harmonics from another plane of existence, bleeding through into our dimension. In the small hours, when the desert nighthawk's cries seeped in through the cracks in the window frame, Alex swore he could perceive movement amid the inky shadows pooling across his bedroom floor. Shapes drifted and elongated as if in mirrored synchronicity with the modulating hum's cycles. At first, they suggested the fluid gesticulations of an unseen pole dancer or fire worshiper, body flowing through hypnotic undulations as primordial as the sonorous frequency entrancing him, familiar yet not. Then, as his eyes adjusted during each waking stupor, Alex sensed those same shadow forms resolve into different, increasingly disturbing iterations. Their amorphous tendrils coalesced into gnarled extremities, tipped with hooked talons, oozing steadily outward as if exploratory feelers preceding a fuller emergence. 
In the momentary wake of a passing car's high beams through the shaded windows, he thought he glimpsed the bioluminescent gleam of a dozen slitted pupils from those shifting silhouettes, contracting away from the intrusion of light, an infinitesimal collective flutter like a swarming beast disturbed mid-feeding. Okay, that's it. I've officially turned the final corner into abject psychosis. Did that... Did those things actually move? Or am I just one sad, pathetic hallucination away from a straitjacket vacation myself? The sealed room had become a womb of quasi-reality, where the infrasonic vibrations reigned supreme and unchallenged. Alex drifted in and out of waking consciousness, never fully asleep, yet never truly awake either. Whole days seemed to unspool into successive dream states, reality fraying at the edges until his only anchor to the physical plane was Dr. Harrow's periodic, impassive visitations and the reams of smeared musical scribblings that littered the shadowed floor. He found himself looping through the same ritualistic cycles, immersive trance-like frenzies of unrestrained id given over to the resonance, followed by fugue states where time dissolved into the ether. Sensory deprivation punctuated only by that perpetual pulsing drone, anchoring him in the oral abyss. During the latter balms of disassociation, Alex's senses expanded in unfamiliar directions, transcending the limited scope of normal human perception. He became aware of subtle energies around him, dormant presences shifting in the inky pools of darkness with each swell of the hum's amplitudes. At first, mere amorphous abstractions in his peripheral sight, the shadows steadily coalesced into distinct forms, conforming to the vibration's rhythms with a synchronicity that pushed past mere coincidence. Humanoid outlines flickered into existence in tandem with the sound's cresting frequencies, their undulating physicality awash in a cold, alien luminescence. Elongated limbic appendages seemed to beckon from those indistinct silhouettes, inhuman gesticulations, inviting Alex to surrender himself fully to the coaxing harmonics and join them in the subliminal dimensions of pure resonance between sonic planes. They're here. Those presences, always slithering just out of sight, now piercing the veil in unison with the hum's intensifying cadence. They crave unification, a rejoining of forms and frequencies across the vibrational rift. And I'm the conduit. It's becoming clearer to me now. The eldritch symbiosis at work. Dr. Harrow circled Alex's prone form, huddled in the corner as shadows danced across the sealed room refracting through the single beam of murky light from the cracked window. Her eyes shone with the zeal of someone beholding transcendent revelation firsthand. For so long, we've studied these phenomena in isolation, cataloging auditory anomalies as freak atmospheric disturbances or minor geological byproducts. But the ancients knew different. Her words came faster now, fueled by a current of zealotry. They paid sacrifice, engaged in occult practices, all to curry the favor of the Forgotten Ones. Eldritch creatures attuned to a different vibrational plane than our own reality. Alex felt his throat constrict as she loomed nearer, her shadow undulating across his face in time with the rapidly intensifying drone divesting stray bottle cap notebooks from her satchel, each page grew frantic with sketches of strange, untranslatable sigils and incantations. Of course, the key was resonance. Modes of expression that could bridge both worlds serve as spirit conduits. Their kind exists in perpetual syncopation beyond our realm until... She broke off, distracted by an errant moat of smoke illuminated in a refracted beam of murky sunlight. For a heartbeat, her gaze seemed to detect something there, a shifting specter in the billowing current, before the apparition was swallowed by darkness once more. Until what? Alex choked out, voice raw from his earlier spasms. His body felt heavy and drained, as if steadily siphoned of vitality. Dr. Harrow responded with a cold, distant smile her focus already retreating back into whatever frenzied headspace she now occupied. Until we attune to their frequency. In the waning days that followed, Alex succumbed to recurrences of waking night terrors, a series of visceral episodes where he felt his physical form being rent asunder, molecule by molecule, then subsumed by the overriding vibrations. Each time, Alex would lurch awake to the stark monochrome of the sealed, light-starved room, cold and clammy and utterly alone, 
except for the readouts of Dr. Harrow's monitoring equipment. She was always in the periphery, an inscrutable watcher, logging his transformation in meticulous analytic detail. As the tall shadows of dusk sculpted themselves across the peeling wallpaper, Alex would slip back into fitful reveries. Instead of conventional dreams, he found himself subsumed by sound waves, cascading through a technicolor plasma of interlaced frequencies that pulsed and strobed in complex harmonic resonances. Hidden amid those cycling waveform vortices lurked indistinct spectral forms, willowy, elongated shadows that appeared to have substance yet no fixed corporeal shape beyond a maddening suggestion of the half-seen. The outline of a humanoid silhouette would briefly materialize like a ghostly photographic negative, only to dilate and splinter into a radial explosion of scintillating shards or a trillion beckoning tendrils. The visions came together and dissolved in a constant cycling flux, synchronized in timing to those omnipresent, otherworldly vibrations. The hum, no longer just a sound, it's an inhabitation, a calling, a summoning force pulling me apart on the subatomic level recombining my essence into something else. It's transforming me into one of them. Those spectral beings that lurk between the harmonic dimensions, awaiting sympathetic frequencies to beckon their presence across the veil. I am the hum, and the hum is me. We are entwined, a singular entity in a symphony of cosmic chaos, and its droning is the overture that precedes their coming. In the silence that followed, when it awakened to a world subtly altered, the omnipresent hum vanished as if it had never existed, but in its wake, a palpable sense of unease settled over the tiny town, bleeding outward in insidious ripples. A languor gripped the citizens as normalcy gradually resumed, yet everyone moved about their daily rituals with a hollow-eyed detachment, unable to shake the faintest refrains of subconscious trepidation. It was as if some intangible essence had seeped from their world, leaving it gutted and diminished. Whispers of the strange drifter musician who disappeared into the void soon became the latest installment of Winnet's sparse lore. Bar conversations dwelled on the topic with nervous energy one night, only to evaporate into uneasy silence the next. The cautious shuffling of feet across warped wooden floors, the furtive exchange of darting sideways glances into shadow-veiled corners. In the nights that followed, those with keen ears occasionally heard faint resonances through the arid dark, fleeting echoes of that former droning pulse now refracted and weakened, as if emanating from some distant point far beyond their comprehension. These were disquieting reminders that some doors, once pried ajar, can never be resealed. A dimly lit chamber, the only illumination emanating from a series of verdant hourglasses filled with glowing sand. The ritual was a success. The fabric between realms has been parted. And the vibrational frequencies, were they attuned as predicted? Perfectly calibrated. Our prognostications aligned. The silhouettes of several robed figures move across the shadows, their features obscured by the eerie green glow. Then the transcendence is upon us. The stars have decreed this the appointed age. Not merely an age, brother. A new cosmic epoch heralded by the alignment of Earth's resonance with the primordial harmonics. A figure steps forward, face concealed by a deep cowl. An hourglass is clutched in skeletal hands. For centuries, we have safeguarded the forbidden law, waiting for the celestial clock to chime this moment into existence. The Enigma Veil's true purpose is now within our grasp. The figure upends the hourglass, its glowing sands cascading in a hypnotic flow. As the cycles converge, our consciousness shall transcend these corporeal shells. We shall shed our mortal veils and be reborn as conduits to receive the Ancient Ones into our newly forged realm of unified existence. The other figures raise their arms in reverence as a deep subsonic thrum begins to reverberate through the chamber. The vibrational planes are merging. I can feel the frequencies aligning. Indeed, the music of the spheres crescendos, heralding the arrival of our cosmic brethren. A new age has begun. The hourglasses shatter as the thrum intensifies their shards glittering like emerald stars amidst a symphony of shattering glass. Darkness consumes the chamber as reality itself seems to judder and convulse.
edge of a knife He's balanced his life In the mirror of his eyes The world's cold and ice Tails etched in skin Until the sun's harsh grin A wanderer sin Where does he begin? With every step The shadows grow In the heart of night His sorrows flow We appreciate your company as we navigate these enigmatic tales. If you found this journey enjoyable, show your most horrific support by slashing the like button, subscribing, and smashing the bell. We have exclusive products based on these stories in the comments. Stay tuned to the channel for more dark and disturbing tales based on true stories or unique stories inspired by those events. If there is a story you would like to hear, please leave a comment.